Oh, is it a repeat or repeat S? S. Oh. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Evo Club Tri Stations. We are going off for a drive, and oh my god, we're having too many cars over here. Uh, I'll cover some cars up there and uh, also run through with you my, my ownership experience of again over uh, six months. The more I drive this car, the more I love it. I'm chucking it into a very tight look at that. I'm just pulling myself out. Uh, it's still direct, you know where it's pointing, but it doesn't give you feedback. So just box the hell out of me. I just want to show you something really awesome. Look at that. That's an NSX. Oh, when I saw this car, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought I was sleeping. Wow, I like the tail lamps. Oy. So cool. Coolest car of the day, NSX. All right, we're gonna sleep brief and uh, get out of here soon. I'll give you a quick rundown on my ownership experience of the Megan while I drive and uh, yeah, let's have some fun guys. Look at a beautiful morning guys. Ooh. What a view to wake up to, yeah? Precisely, you don't have to manage that torque steer in the front end, which is normal for most front wheel drive cars. So it allows you to focus on driving. Is it less dramatic? Now, this car is quite dramatic because of the rear wheel steer and not to mention the torsion beam. So, what it likes to do is like the rear likes to swing out during the corner like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hesitated a little bit, but the, 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 the rear likes to swing out. The rear really likes to dance. There you go, it dances a little bit now again and there, right? 
So when doing hard cornering, the rear rotates the opposite direction to rotate the car. And that sounds great and all, but you put that on top of a torsion beam. What does it do? See, torsion beams like to, like to lift up and slide around. And rear wheel steer makes it slide a little bit more. As a result, there's a feeling sometimes, and I get it why a lot of journalists say that it's, uh, it feels corrupted. It, it does feel corrupted. It feels like something else is working the car. But after you get used to it, I mean, look at that. a McGann and then you just you know put on some a better engine better chassis and stuff that's not how it's done this chassis is completely built welded differently than uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna drive defensively when you're on, on public roads yeah it's welded differently it's stiffer to provide a better driving dynamics and I think it's important especially for this setup because what happens is that the rear has to swing around but if the car is soft it flexes it doesn't have that swinging motion anymore right so it's it's essential in the whole driving experience to make it extremely stiff so the car is welded differently and when i was detailing my car i took off the rims um, i we made a mistake by having a wrong uh car stand you know the stand that holds the car where you remove the tires so three of the stands front and the left the front two and then the, the back left uh were from one brand and the rear right was from another brand normally a normal car would flex down right but it was stiff like straight stiff and i was climbing in and out of the car doing the interior detailing and stuff and my god the car just holds on that is insane stiff isn't it but that's what Megans R, Megan RS, right? The RS is not just for show. It's not a badge to to prove that oh, you know, this is a better car than yours. It's, it's legit, all about performance. You can feel every bit of it in the car. It's continued to wow me and wow me. You know, I thought the more I drive this car, the more I love it. It's very addictive. It's it's unique. It doesn't drive like a front-wheel drive car. Not at all. This is the thing, the car doesn't... Look, I'm chucking it into a very tight... Look at that. I'm just pulling myself out. Almost full throttle and the car just goes. Look at that. So much confidence. But this is my conclusion about them again after driving it for a while. See, there are... I feel like a lot of the manufacturers, the Germans, the Japanese, all of them are sort of, you know, you know, not like when you're in a classroom and uh, everyone is like uh, copying each other's work. So everyone comes up with somewhat a similar theme or similar like ideology or approach to build something or do something, right? And that's what's happening with a lot of the common hatchbacks around, even the performance ones, right? I mean, think about it. Multi-link suspension in the rear, right? Uh, big power plant, a lot of boost down low, uh, all-wheel drive. This is, they're trying to create this stability of the car around corners, like it's a sedan, you know? And I think that's good, you know, because you get that stability, you get to push the car a little bit more. But the Megane has different ideas. <laughs> the RS engineers, I feel they did everything completely different than what the others would have done. Power plant is 1.8. Yes, 280 horsepower. That's not the point. The point is that they put all the boost, it builds up to the end 
of the top bend. That makes a lot of people, you know, may, may feel like, for a common guy, they feel like, where's the turbo? You know, I don't feel the power of the car. Because that turbo gives the sensation of like, it's easy to push, especially for the modern turbos with, with no legs, you know, and stuff. You know, all the top bends are below. People feel that when you drive the car, I feel like, wow, this is impressiveness of it. Not this car, the top, the top down low is not very high. But what the engineers have done with this engine is that they push the top bend up. So it feels very naturally aspirated, which as, a, as racing, you would like it because you want to make sure your power bend is nice and smooth, especially when you are you know, downshifting like this. This is well known for understeer this corner. <laughs> yeah. So that already is different, the engine. The, the, you know, gone with the whole idea of you know, giving immediate search of power, you have to work for it. That's why we like any cars, we have to work for the power. And this car has that. Right? The rear. So with multi-link suspension and also especially with all-wheel drive, they solve a problem of front wheel drive's uh, issue. The front is always the weak point of the car because it would understeer under heavy cornering, right? And because it's doing both the steering and power down and the engine is up front it does put the car in a very vulnerable position to understeer right everything is loaded on the front tire so in order to deload the tire okay uh, a lot of all-wheel drive systems um, use the, the torque from the engine to push the car around from the rear But then again, RS does it very differently. Torsion beam allows you to flow it around and then it reduces the need for the front to rotate because now the inertia of the car, the momentum of the car is rotating the car from the rear. Okay, that's brilliant, isn't it? And then you have all wheel steer to agitate that steer a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah, so. That's why I really like my Megan. Um, and I start to realize this is an extremely unique package. Yeah, it just tackled some hard driving with, with like a champ. You know, it, it, it just... Oh. I reckon I can go faster up to Gending Highlands with more confidence with this car than my Spider. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot more to talk about. But, uh, you know, just the driving dynamics. This is uh, what I've discovered over the um, last... Uh, four or five months of owning this car over here and then uh, when we have some time later on uh, I'll just show you around um, uh, how it's like to what's the interior like you know, what are the things I like and don't like but in the driving experience side um, you know again all the value shows up when you're pushing the car hard this is a legit race car with no it's just so good of course the, the suspension is not that harsh you know uh, but it's but it's firm, but it's not jarring. I don't know how they do it. The French people just know how to build um, a great car, you know. So I feel this product is really honest. It, they achieve what they intend to do. That's that's what I I really respect about Renault. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll do you a little walk around later on with the car and the interior, exterior things I like, I don't like. But uh, yeah, let's head off and see what cars are here today as well, right? Hey guys, good morning. And uh, hey, morning guys. Morning, morning. Beautiful W124. So cool, man. Oh, that radiator sound only comes from that car. So unique. Uh. Evo 7. Proper, proper. Alright. 718 Cayman over here. Cayman R. This car is the twin brother of the K Stage 2 intake plenum, uh, throttle body. Uh, everything is changed even the lower arms were all from yeah all completely changed exhaust sounds amazing it's really angry looking uh, 3 series F30s G20s all right what's a car made without a BMW there's always BMWs around uh, look at that we even have a uh, uh, Axia all right look at that uh, the 987 Cayman Bobby's repeat M5 all right and oh this is a 530i 
I think this is the best engine for this car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 best engine for this car. And uh, Clayton came all the way from Singapore to join us now. Drive, this is so awesome. Uh, FK8R, Audi R8. Oh, look at this very naughty Mustang. Look at that little double hit. <laughs> oh, wow, check it out. Oh, yo. Look at the seats. So cool. The loot, man. This. This is the first time I think they had double wish mode and rear wheel steer as well. Yeah. Got MX5, this Jared's MX5. Okay. Polos, Ventos. Check it out. Another prelude. Oh man, this is why I love Evo Club. There's so many different kind of cars over here. And a Yaris. Oh, check out the GI, GI Yaris. You know, that's not Yaris. Sorry. I thought it was a GI Yaris. <laughs> hey, you can. From far, I thought it's a GI Yaris, you know. I saw the top here, right? I thought it's GI Yaris. <laughs> okay, bro. See you. Right. See you. Take care. Uh, Lexus IS. And then the Alteza, which is, I think, is so awesome. Um, you know. I like the rear design because look at that. No one ever does this and no one will do this again. That's so cool, right? And uh, I don't know if I can get into the interior. I just want to show you guys. Check this out. Look at the dials, man. It's like a freaking watch. So cool. Yeah. One of my favorite cars here today. Hey, morning. And then we have the NSX. I mean, it's looking immaculate. DTC4 Lusso V8, but sounds great. Okay, and we have the Pista. SLK Bagus Bagus uh, This is an E46 M3 Of course This is a rare car The M140i Coupe You know Last rear wheel drive hatchback This is the B58 engine Just revs better I always felt the N55 is a bit dead at the top end and Yeah, I brought my Megan today Had so much fun in it This guy came all the way from uh, Johor Joho, From JB to drive us Yeah Yeah so many cars. Thank you guys for bringing out your beautiful cars to let us iron your cars and just enjoy them. Alright? Come join us for a drive next time. So, as you can see, we're done with the drive. We're here at Miyagi's and we're going to give this car a nice wash in a moment. But, um, yeah, I was in the drive and I was telling you how much I love the chassis of the car and how much I love the drive. Um, so this time, we're going to walk around the car and talk about uh, what I also like in the walk around review and what I don't like as well. Uh, let's talk about the driving dynamics. I know in the moment of uh, driving, it was so spirited and I enjoyed it. Oh, oh by the way, there's this uh, um, comfort access. So it opens up, unlocks itself as you put your hands around it or when you walk close to the car. Check this out. <laughs> I do like that function from uh, the Renault. It does give you a sense of occasion. I know it's very childish, but hey, driving a hot hatch, right? But anyways, back to the driving dynamics that I don't like. The steering, for me, is the weak spot of the driving dynamics. Um, it feels a bit dead off center, especially during high speed. So it's a bit hard to gauge uh, where you are. There's not much feedback as well all around. But in the dead center is what's really a bit not so, it doesn't inspire confidence. Uh, it's still direct, you know where it's pointing, but it doesn't give you feedback. So you, you're a bit hesitant sometimes because you're not sure whether the front is going to break traction or not. It has a very high traction limit, but of course it's nice to know when the traction is breaking. So I wish I had a little bit more feedback, and especially in the wet, I, I think that's very important. However, you get a lot of feedback through your butt because um, the chassis is stiff, suspension is really communicative, um, and uh, even this is the sport seats, this is not the actual Recaro seats, it does give you some sort of stiffness in it. So you can still feel it without making it too jarring. Of course, the full-on Recaro seat will give you even more feedback. So yeah, I, I think it's still okay because you can still rely on your butt and your body to tell how far the traction is. But with regards to wet grip, um, the best is to have some steering feel so you know where you are with the limits. So that's kind of a bit of something that I learn to not like too much about the car okay now uh on to the interior i'll tell you what I, that irritates me a lot <laughs> uh, 
this thing guys it just bugs the hell out of me because it looks like carbon fiber this is not actual carbon fiber it's a trim now i can accept this on plastic because it's solid right but this a this is a cloth so it's soft and it looks like carbon fiber i i don't know what they're doing you know the french are very creative so this is probably one of the uh, honest creativity i don't feel it uh, let me know in the comments what you feel about it but uh <laughs> it doesn't do it doesn't work for me it doesn't work for me at all yeah uh the other thing that i don't quite like as well as the pedal um positions i find that the brake and the accelerator is a bit too near sometimes so it's a little bit hard to heal and toe in the beginning but you'll get used to it eventually it's all right uh clutch um it's a bit high but it's really light so it's nice for daily um so i have no complaints about that uh the interior uh the build quality is not like volkswagen standard that's where volkswagen really shines with the golf is it's really nice build quality this one feels a little bit more akin to uh i feel a toyota there's nothing wrong with it it's just i mean the megane is a common man's car in in europe right so it's acceptable to have a quality like that so it's not the you know you can hear it's a hard plastic you know so it's not the most luxurious interior okay but space wise in the rear i've sat in the rear before it's really spacious this is my driving position and uh look at that i have a uh, ample amount of space and the seats are not too upright it's just nice i feel nice lumbar support so i do like this about the again it's very usable it's very dailyable and uh it's pliant the suspension is nice a lot of my passengers felt that uh, it was quite comfortable sitting over here you know so no complaints at all even got a, a socket to charge your phone yep the rear is a nice place to be even got uh, cup holders uh this is my daily and i'm happily driving this car on a daily basis very comfortable right um now one thing that i don't like uh, and some people might mind mm, to me it does bother me from time to time it's the boot space uh, it's it's a bit shallow and i kind of get it because there's a reason for it right let me just uh toss this aside <laughs> and show you can you see that big box over there now what's that that my friends is the exhaust of the car right the exhaust is right there and why it works like that is because they got to make space with those diffusers so diffusers are not just for show they're actual diffusers to actually generate uh, aerodynamics for the car okay so they need space for that they got to shove that upwards and in fact the exhaust kind of runs on top of the torsion beam and there the exhaust is over there it does look now if you just look at this it looks a bit lamborghini-ish but as a package, it does look very nice. I think it suits the car. Yeah, very daring design and I think it works out well. Again, this is something what the French do. They just do what they want to do. There's a lot of things that I like about the car actually, more than the things I don't like about the car. Um, oh yeah, I got to show you this. I really got to show you this. Another French genius design. Now, if you look at this steering wheel, there is this little um, knob over here. Please don't mind the sound again. So this is your stock where you do your windows or your signal left and right, whatever, right? So down here you have this little thing here. At first, it really annoys me because it's like, ah, I got two things here and this is kind of like, there's no pedal shifter because it's a manual, right? But after a while, I really like this. So check this out. You have the volume up, volume down. You have the mute button if you want it to be muted you can choose your mode but i and answer your phone over here telephone okay you can choose your source but i mostly use the volume button and also track up track down okay because one of the things that you use the most other than air conditioning is usually the radio and what the french have done is that they make this little stock over here i know the peugeot do it as well now I hated it, but I get it right now. Because when you're shifting gears, your left hand is here. You're not gonna go and press the, you know, you want to make sure your hands are ready to shift gear if you need to shift or hold the steering, right? So you can keep both hands on the steering or one hand on the gear knob while you change your song or, or change the 
the volume and stuff i mean this is genius i like it i really really like it okay so that's pretty cool yeah so yeah you got a uh, apple carplay which is great got a socket here so i got um my um dash cam all up over there um i do like this gear uh handbrake design you know it's kind of quirky but i i get why they do it because they don't want it to be long so it's, it can be short you know and this lever over here uh gear shift yeah the gear shift the challenge of the gear shift is that it's pretty narrow so it's very narrow and it's very short like, it can be a good thing, but you got to get used to it before you can start shifting fast. Because sometimes you go into like, I'm, I'm trying to go into like 5, but I'm actually in 3. So you got to really manage the space between it. So that's one of the things that I didn't like. Uh, the little compartment is really small. It's almost non-existent. <laughs> but, guess what? It's enough to fit me my uh, fire extinguisher, fire expire, right? Okay. <clears throat> So yeah, these are the things that uh, I like and dislike about my car. But again, overall, the look is really growing on me. I was never a fan of big, bright colors. Oh yeah, it makes it sound when you depart the car. So which I like, it's very convenient. But uh, yeah, eventually I just fall in love with the car more and more. You know what? This is a great daily. I, I can't really think of a daily that packs so much fun. Um, it's practical. And uh, it's very comfortable, at, at least for me, it's really comfortable with the hydraulic bump stop. Um, for those of you who are watching, you don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's uh, a little hydraulic bump stop on top of the suspension too. So you feel everything from the road, but the hydraulic bump stop uh, still transfers the communication, but it kind of um, softens the, the, the sharpness of the bumps. Yeah, it certainly has a price that slightly higher or maybe higher than the Golf uh, because it is an RS. RS is not in the range of, say, a Golf, in my opinion, because RS is like equivalent to an M, so it's not a GTI per se. Uh, but it's really, if you really look at it this way, this car is designed to be a racing car. That's how the chassis is designed. The engine tuning, the chassis, the brakes, everything is, is really a racing car, but it has some daily capabilities. So yeah, love it. Uh, as I stick to my opinion as well, it's not an easy car to drive, once you get used to it, it has so much potential. Yeah. And God, I just love this lamps, the way the, it goes inwards like that. Yep. So there's a little review of my Megan. And uh, hopefully this helps you decide if you're going to pick up a Megan for yourself. I think you won't lose out much if you're getting the, uh, the EDC. Uh, you know, it's still, still very engaging to drive because the chassis is just so, so fun to drive. And that's why I get them again, right? Variable, fun, race car, sporty. Can't ask for more. So this is a review of the car and I uh, hope you enjoy it. If you want more content like this in the future, please help me hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the bell notifications and get alerts in the future about drives, about uh, you know, whether it's a detailing video or reviews and stuff like that. But yeah, and uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about the Renault Megan RS. Uh, uh, if you don't pick this car, what else would you pick or would you pick this car? Right, so with that, thank you so much for watching and uh, I shall see you in another episode. As always, always take care, keep it 100%. Love you guys. Peace out.